Hi, I'm Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out Sequus by Native Instruments. Sequus is the second collaboration between Native Instruments and Orchestral Tools, combining the efforts of two of the best sample library developers out there today. With innovation and style, Sequus is an excellent tool for creating rhythmic underscore, pulsing beds, and even melodic phrases. Sequus is compatible with both the free Contact Player and Contact version 6.6.0 and above. It downloads as 4.3 gigabytes and includes 400 instrument articulations across over 200 tweakable presets across a wide range of sound categories. Sequus is normally available from Native Instruments for $199, but is currently on intro offer for $149 until November 3rd, 2021. So today we're checking out Sequus by Native Instruments, which is actually a collaboration between Native Instruments and Orchestral Tools. The second actual collaboration between the two, with the first being Arcus, which came out, I guess, about a year or two years ago, maybe, probably two years ago. Anyway, Sequus is um, really focused on taking a lot of the samples that Orchestral Tools has really become known for, a lot of really nice orchestral samples, nice instrumental samples, and putting those into um, a, a very unique sequencer, a layer sequencer of sorts, which actually operates both on the mod wheel and through an edit page, which we'll get into a little bit later. Essentially, the idea is, is that you can layer the instruments one by one so that you can create a layered sequence with the first instrument being at the bottom of the mod wheel. And as you roll the mod wheel up, each new layer becomes audible. So just to give you an example of how this will work, and you can see it's got a little graphic that symbolizes that. So I'm going to go all the way down to the first layer, and we'll start with just the first sound before we jump completely in. And we'll bring in the second. The third. and the last. So you get a really good idea of what we're doing here. And again, when you look under the hood, you have a really nice, uh, nicely laid out and very intuitive and easy to use sequencer for each one of the sound modules. Um, and again, those there are four of those. We're gonna go through a bunch of presets. I think there's around 200 presets overall across like 400 different instrument articulations. So there's a whole lot of uh, instrument in this particular library. We won't be able to touch it all, but hopefully we'll give you a really good sampling of what's in it and maybe even build a sound or two ourselves just to give you an idea of the possibilities. So let's go ahead and jump through some of the presets, you can actually sort through those here just by clicking on the uh, name of the preset. And of course, you can also do that in the drop down menu here, but we're going to go through here and actually you can see that the categories are pretty wide and varied. You have bowed, flutes, keys and mallets, a lot of different things, textures, effects. So let's just go through a few of each of these to give you an idea of what's going on here. And let's actually start with getting started, a very good place to start. Maybe playing with timber. Let's see what we have. And again, I'm just gonna start with the bottom layer and just build into the layers. Cool. Let's see what's going on there. So you can see we've got um, the viola at the top layer, as you could hear that coming in. So that was really the only tonal layer. And then we have the still tongue drums, the low tabla, and the shakers. Um, one thing that's really cool too, you'll notice, I'm going to hold this down again so you can hear. And I don't know if you're noticing that, but there's actually an accent on the very first note and throughout in different places. That's actually denoted by the little dot here, which if you double click on any of these, you can actually create accents with those. Of course, you have the volume control for each one on each step. So 
so you can hear that little accent. It's really, really nice. And again, we'll continue to get into the engine, but let's go through some more sounds. How about Rhythm Ensemble? And I, I really like leaving it on this page just so you can see kind of what's happening under the hood. The animation's really nice and it really shows you how this works. But I really like being able to show you what sounds everything's made of. How about string answer? I'm a sucker for strings. I think we all are. Again, starting at the bottom. Just really, really, really cool. Very neat. And, and just to show you kind of how this works, as you pull up each of these, you can see that each of the layers has a number of sounds and each sound has a number of articulations that you can choose from. So just to give you an example, like with the cello, you can see there's two different cellos going on here. In the one, we have a ricochet solpont, and in the other, we have a repetitive solpont. So, you know, let's just change out a few of the sounds to give you an idea of what you can do here. So maybe, um, let's see which layer this is. Let's actually solo this. Okay, so that's just that little rhythmic layer. Let's actually change that and see, let's try Echo Spiccato. Now what the echoes are, those are really interesting. And we'll get into that a little bit later with some of the presets because there's an entire category dedicated to it. But echoes basically take, um, they go through a series of round robins. I think it's seven round robins that are actually fading out, which allows you to get some really cool polyrhythmic action going on. But for now, let's just try and how about a repetitive staccato? It's a little more gentle or Let's see, what if we did maybe a single Martell? Okay, now let's change out um, this cello and maybe we want a viola instead and we'll do some, I don't know, let's try maybe some Soltasto. Those are really quiet. You can hear those are really quiet. And obviously because they're Soltasto, it, they, they have to hold out a little bit longer as well. So maybe we want to, I don't know. Let's see. Let's just add some layers here. And I don't know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll make this an accent and this an accent. Why not? Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, now what if we took um, out the dobro and maybe we replace that with a piano and maybe that piano would be single octaves. Let's see what that sounds like. So instead of soloing all these, let's actually just mute the, the cones there. Okay, and now let's see, maybe we could substitute, I don't know, maybe a nylon guitar with a short tremolo. Let's see.
So you can see really, really quickly, we have a completely different sound. And again, you know, maybe we want to build something from the ground up. So let's just delete everything with our little delete icon. And I'm going to go in here and just build something completely random. So maybe I want to, let's see, maybe I want to do something like this with that piano octave. And I don't know, that viola maybe we'll do, maybe we'll make it a little different. And let's see, and then I don't know, maybe just a little something there, just doing something random. And then the cello, maybe we just wanna do something like this. I feel like Bob Ross right now, you know, the famous painter. This is, this is your sequencer, your happy sequencer. Just make it what you want it to be. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe we'll just see what we got here. I don't know if this will be worth listening to, but let's give it a whirl. Did you see how easy that was? I mean, I just completely randomized this and it comes out sounding great. I mean, that is just really great. Okay, let's just continue with some of the getting started patches. I'm really impressed with how easy this is to create something really cool. And again, let's start with the layers. Actually, this one might, that's, okay, so. This one, okay, this one does loop. There's something interesting here. You'll notice the poly note. Okay, I didn't mention that. That's something I should have mentioned. Poly note is actually different than mod wheel. Whereas with the mod wheel, the mod wheel actually brings in each of the layers. Poly note is really interesting in that what it does is it actually will, as you play a different note, it will bring in a different layer. So if you hold down the first note, you'll only get the first layer. You hold down two notes, you'll get two, et cetera, all the way to four. So let's start with that. Just something really unique. Okay. Oh, the thin red line. That's one of the best. Oh, I love that movie. Best war film ever, in my opinion. Okay. Let's see what we've got. And first of all, let's see. Oh, okay. So this one is on the mod wheel and it is looping. And you'll notice that you do have a loop. If you take the loop off, it will only play the sequence one time and it won't, it won't continue to play it, but we're going to keep the loop on and let's see what we've got. See waiting room. I mean, you can see this is not just basic underscore. These can be fantastic rhythmic underscore rhythmic beds, but these can be full on songs. I mean, it's pretty crazy just how much you can get out of this. Really, really cool. Okay, 
One more, Noble Princess Bride. And this time, let's go backwards. Let's start with all of the layers and then go down one by one, if indeed this is on the mod wheel, which it is. Here we go. Okay, let's get into some of the categories. How about bowed? String, suspense, actually let's jump up to the top. You can see there are a whole lot of presets. A loose standard, let's see what we have here. Some So, so we've got a couple of violas, a couple of cellos. Let's see what that sounds like. I mean, my goodness, if that doesn't inspire you <laughs> to write a track, I don't know what will. That is fantastic. Okay, how about crime scene? And again, let's go in reverse order. Let's start with them all and then fade out and fade back in and see what we have. Really, really cool. Okay, let's see. Let's go... How about Generation Mars? Let's see what that is. Okay, so we've got a marimba, some shakers, a cello, and a viola. Really, really cool. Okay, how about Home Song? Now you're going to notice something happening here as well. So you have four different beats, obviously. Um, so you can turn any of these on or off. And then also you can have them reverse or you can have them repeat. So for instance, if I were to do this, then it's going to play through one time, it's going to play through again, and then it's going to continue to the next step. Or if I do this, it's going to play through one time, when it gets to the end, it's going to reverse and go back and then move to the next step. So let's show you how that works. So it can really give you an interesting vibe. 
And th the other thing too, in addition to that, obviously if you turn off one of the beats, you know, you can instantly get three, four time instead of four, four, but also here with your beats, um, you have, you know, 16th notes by default, but you can, all, you can turn this into triplets as well. So that's just another option that you can do. And you'll notice that when I do that, it only is affecting the individual layer. So I could do triplets on one layer. I could do 16ths on another. So you can get some really interesting combinations. I will say, I do wish this was configurable. It's limited to 16th notes. I wish I could turn it into eighth notes, 32nd notes, etc. But one thing that, that does kind of cure that ill is the fact that you have a tempo control. So you can go obviously in, you know, in BPM with your DAW, or you can double the tempo or you can half time the tempo. So there is a, some, a workaround somewhat. I would like to see that in addition to this though. I think that would, that would just make it really cool. There's also a swing control as well. This is a small, a really small little, uh, small thing that's not, you know, overly important, but it would be nice to have some of those extra steps to be able to customize that even a little more. Let's go ahead and go to another, how about newscast? Just really, really cool. Golly, you can just have so much fun with this thing, guys. It's really okay. I'm, I've got to start moving. I'm really not touching many of the presets because you just get stuck having so much fun with them. Punchy strings. Just so cool. Okay, string question. Let's do one more in the boat category. How about viola scratch? Okay, so let's move on to flutes. Oktoberfest. That sounds appropriate. And how about Pan is Calling? Really interesting. You'll notice that you can get some really interesting polyrhythms going here. So it's not just even though it would appear, you know, with the, with 16th uh, notes being kind of the default, you know, it would almost appear that you're a little bit stuck, but you're really not. You can do all sorts of interesting movements. All right, let's do one more. How about action flutes? That sounds fun.
Okay, let's move to the keys and mallets. How about ambient minimalism? That sounds attractive. A piano, two still tongue drums, and a bass. Now, another thing I should show you as well are the effects. So there's a separate effects section for each of the sound layers, and you can turn on a filter, delay, and reverb. You'll see that those are easy to turn on just by clicking the button here, and obviously you have the controls. So um, you can see, for instance, this piano. Let's solo that out so that you can hear. If we wanted to just affect that and make it, I don't know, like maybe let's make it very, a uh, real ping pong sound going on. How about that? Something like this maybe? And then if we wanted to up the reverb some, Okay, now let's try that. So you can see there's a lot of possibilities. That's the thing about something like this. Usually when you hear about a loop library, you know, you're automatically a little bit nervous because you think, Gosh, am I going to be really limited in what I can do? Am I going to sound like a lot of other people? The answer is, you know, it's really, it's, it's pretty unlimited what you can do. I mean, obviously there are parameters with any kind of loop based instrument, but this is pretty open-ended. I'm very impressed. Let's try some more. How about city lights? Really nice. Okay, how about melancholic percussion? A couple of pianos, a still tongue drum, and a marimba. Right, let's do a couple of more in the keys category. How about piano echoes? And again, the echoes, anytime you see the echoes category, that's where you're going to have that sound that kind of um, fades out a bit from, you know, basically echo, echoing around Robin. So you can get kind of that polyrhythmic action going. All right, let's see, how about Quartet of Colors?
Really nice. Really nice. I don't know about you, but I can see myself getting a whole lot of use out of this. I, I wish there was a favorites button here that you could, you know, put a heart beside something to come back to it. There's just so many great presets here. And the great thing about these presets in particular is they really are just starting points because, you know, you can obviously change one or two of the layers. You can change the timing, the emphasis with the accent, the volume, the effects, you know, so the, the pattern itself, as far as what beats it plays and, you know, if it reverses, if it loops, etc. So there's just a whole lot of options. Let's do percussion now. And there's a lot of percussion in here. Not only a lot of presets, but there's just a lot of sounds to use for percussion. Let's try the blacksmith bounce. And you can see we have a lot of metal percussion here. Let's see what we've got. I mean, that's the thing with this instrument, you can have rhythmic string beds, you can have percussion, you know, there's multiple instruments you can get out of this. Not only the layers itself, but gosh, can you imagine combining multiple instances of this with, you know, your own string writing, your own orchestral writing on top? Gosh, just a lot of, a lot of possibilities. Okay, now just for fun, I don't know, let's just go in here and let's just do a little something extra. Maybe, I don't know, throw in a couple of random accents here and there. I'm just playing folks, let's see what we got. Okay, let's convert a few of those to triplets, a couple of those, and see what happens. I don't know, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think it's impossible to make this sound bad. I mean, I am literally just throwing stuff on here and it comes out sounding great. That is so cool. Okay, let's see, how about ContraBox? A lot of subtlety. There's a lot of nice subtlety in the percussion section here. Okay, that one's almost so quiet I can't hear it. I'm sure it sounds good, but I am not going to turn it up. We'll just move on to another one. How about Limp Groove? Really, really cool. I mean, you can even do cool live performances with this. 90s house. And like I say, some of these are quieter than others, so you know, just keep that in mind. You obviously can turn it up. I'm having to avoid that just so I don't 
end up blowing your ears out with some of the presets. Okay, shaker party. Let's do one more and then we'll move along. All right, let's go ahead and move to the plucked category. Let's see what we have here. Bedtime stories. Oh man, if you, if you score films, <laughs> especially things like, I don't know, documentaries, and I can just see this on all sorts of things. Really, really, really cool. I've got to figure out what is making, I think this Dobro and this flute has some, ma have some massive reverb on them. Oh yeah. I mean, have you ever heard a Dobro sound like that? That is awesome. Let's see what's going on. So we've got the filter delay and a massive amount of reverb really cool and then this flute oh yeah i mean that's just that's great 99 percent mix on the reverb yeah that's really really great okay moving along how about difficult encounter Okay, so this is the poly note, so let's let's do it the right way. I mean, that's a great way to build some tension, huh? Really, really nice. Okay, hazy rehearsal. And this is a mod wheel one. So let's go back to the edit screen. Moving down, let's go to, how about Nylon Melancholy? I like how they're combining multiple instruments too. Like you've got a repetition finger, a tremolo, a tremolo short, uh, repetitive harmonics, and a single vibrato, all from the nylon guitar. Really, really cool. All right, let's move on to vocals. Yes, it even has vocals. Drunk Waltz. These are cool. Okay, how about heads up?
polyrhythmic chanting. That sounds interesting. Let's build that one. First of all, let's make sure it's a mod wheel. Okay, it is. So let's build it. And what's one of the really cool things about this too is that some of these uh, vocals, they actually have syllables and they will cycle through round robin different syllables. So just to show you. So you can see like it's cycling through different things. Let's see. Let me take this off. So you can hear it's different syllables. That's just really cool. Okay, one more. How about, let's go down here. How about vocalization? Really, really cool. Let's go to textures. I can just build that and layer it. Really, really cool. How about we go up and we try dimensions? Now, one of the things I want to mention as well, let's just use this one as an example. You can actually put this on play mode as well, or excuse me, you could take it off the loop mode and you can do the poly note. And again, you can just hold it. And instead of it looping over and over, it will just go through the sequence one time. So you can see how that works as well. Really neat. Okay, one more texture. Very nice. Okay, let's try bass lines. Let's jump down to heavy breathing bass. Let's go low on that one. Yeah, these are bass lines, so let's go low on them. How about relaxed baseline? Really nice. Okay, how about slow suspense?
Oh, that flute is fantastic. Wow, I'm going to turn that up. That is really nice. Check that out. Let's go even a little louder with that. I'm going to take it up and see what happens. I mean, that is just awesome. The underscore potential for that one is very high, friends. Subterranean Pulse. I mean, these are just so nice. These are under the bass category, but... They really sound like just great textures. Let's try the viola scapes. Those are very, very quiet. I apologize. Again, I'm not going to turn it up just so that I don't blow you away. Let's do a different one instead. I could hear that in my headphones, but if you didn't have headphones, you probably weren't hearing that one. Oh, I think we just did that one, so sorry. Let's do Steamy Pulse. Okay, let's go to Echoes. Now, these are the ones that I was telling you about that they fade away, so they actually have an echo on the sound, which means that you end up with some really interesting overlap. Let's try one. Oh, and you can see this is another one of those that just has the loop off, so it only plays once. So let's play around with that and do some, maybe some chording with it. can see the potential not just for looping you know but actually making that a playable instrument really really nice knock on the delay let's see this is another one that that has the loop turned off so let's play some chords with this Really, really nice. See, you can just do all sorts of things with that. Not just, not just looping. I'm actually surprised how playable that is. Melancholic band. just get lost playing this. 
There's just so many cool sounds. Okay, one more in this category. And again, this is a playable one, so let's give it a play. Really, really cool. Okay, last but not least, effects. Let's try a few of these and see what we have. Crystal Clamp. You can see on this one, it's going all the way through one, it's going through two and then back again, or excuse me, it's going through two twice, three forward and then backward and then to four. So just to show you, really neat. Okay, let's try just a few more of these and see what we have. Ice Mountain. All right, and let's find two more. The clock. Let's try that one. That one's really quiet. I'm hoping you heard that. It's really fantastic. You'll definitely have to turn that up, but really, really nice. Okay, I lied. How about two more now? Void Finder. <laughs> just keeps going. <laughs> that metal, I think it's that metal, yeah. Believe. Oh yeah, it's got some mad delay on it. That's what's going on. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna venture a guess here. Xenoptica, maybe? Xenoptica, Xenoptica? Um, okay, I'll leave it alone. Let's just listen to it. I got to tell you, playing through this uh, just now, I'm actually really, really impressed with the potential. You know, on the surface, it appears to be basically a loop engine, but it is so much more than that. The potential for layering here is really amazing. I mean, you have four different sound layers, tons of control over the sequencer, over accenting things, using separate effects, um, using lots of different articulations moving through the steps, you know, reverse, repeating, all of that kind of thing. But then in addition to all of that, the fact that you can actually take this out of loop mode and make it really a playable instrument is just really so cool. And obviously the mod wheel being able to bring in those layers, you know, one at a time when you have it in mod wheel mode, being able to just, you know, one, two, three, four, being able to bring in those layers. There's just so much potential here. I, I, there's there's a lot you can do, obviously, within your DAW, but this even has live playing potential, which is surprising to me. So I'm super impressed. The 
Samples are obviously going to be impeccable. Orchestral tools, orchestra samples are some of the best out there. And you can hear that with some of the violas and cellos and things. But lots of great percussion here. Lots of good piano samples. Lots of stringed instruments. Um, just a whole lot to choose from. Very, very impressed. Again, maybe a couple things I would change. Very minor. I would say I would change the number of steps. And, you know, I would like to see that be selectable maybe from four all the way to 32. Um, so that would be something that would be nice. Uh, outside of that, there's really not much I would change. I mean, it's just really a powerful instrument. The only thing I would say that, that might take this over the top is um, more of orchestral tools, fantastic orchestral samples. That's just me being greedy and wanting more goodness in there. And then... You know, I've seen people say, gosh, it would be awesome to have drag and drop user sample functionality in here. Well, yeah, that would be great. I don't expect that. And it's definitely not a make or break thing. There's plenty of other places to drag and drop your samples, plenty of other engines you can use with that. The real draw here is not just the sequencer, but it's the wonderful sample material that's been, you know, placed into this, That's that's been really, you know, curated out of the Orchestral Tools catalog. That's really what you get here. And it is a lot. Super impressive, tons of presets. I'm going to rave on and on. This is an excellent library. I highly encourage you to check it out. And I hope you enjoy it when you do. Thanks for checking out Sequest with me today. So what do you think? Is Sequest something you can envision incorporating into your own workflow? What style of music can you imagine creating with it? Comment below and let us know your thoughts. Please like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to check out samplelibrarywithreview.com for more news and reviews, and to stay in the know about weekly sales via our weekly deal compressor.